Hey guys, Flaccid Baron here, and as you can probably tell by the title of this video, I have just recently hit a pretty awesome milestone. I now have over 3,000 subscribers on the YouTube, and I'm very grateful to you all. I'm making this video as a way to say thanks and to give back to the community. I'm giving away over 12 mil worth of stuff. The prizes are 50 Tomes of Insight to two lucky winners, then they are over 1.5 mil for each stack, an 8.3 bag that's valued at 2.3 million silver, and the grand prize at a whopping 7.3 million silver is this Silver Colossus Beetle. All you have to do to enter is scroll down, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below with your in-game name. In a couple weeks, on May 6th, I will be picking four winners using a random comment picker. So make sure you only comment once, because it'll show me if you comment more than once, and it's not fair to other people if you're commenting more than once. And it'll also tell me if you're subscribed or not, so make sure you don't forget to subscribe. After the winners are picked, I will post a new video announcing the winners and I will send you a friend request in game and I will try to contact you in game. And again, I just want to say thank you guys so much. I couldn't have done it without you. You guys are the best. I love this community. Thank you again. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the video where I will be exploring a new way to play Death Givers. So recently I received a message on Discord telling me to check out a build that Blue Dawn has been working on. And if you want to watch that video, there's a link to his video in the description. The build is up on your screen and it looks very similar to a typical Deathgiver build, but you may notice some key differences. The first and most obvious one being the cape. Normally I'll use a Limhurst cape since this build is very energy intensive, especially in longer fights. But this build uses a Thetford cape to pump out more burst damage. The next obvious change is the food and the potions. The food allows for a bit more burst damage than if you use the eel stew, which only gives 9.5% extra damage. And the potions are meant to replace your Limhurst cape for when you have those longer fights and need more energy. In this first clip, you'll see I am diving two guys in a solo dungeon. I get this guy down to a couple of HP, and I just can't seem to finish him. And now I don't have any defensive, so I'm stuck just trying to run with with nothing. So I go in for a final attack. The guy pops a Reflect, which seems to be the bane of this build. And I mistimed it by half of a second, and I kill myself on his Reflect. This next clip shows the potential this build has to dish out a large amount of damage, even when they have high resistance. So I'm sure you guys have all fought against this annoying build. The Great Nature Staff with thorns, they just run around, get themselves back to full health every time you hit them. But this build can dish out tons of damage super quickly that it's not really an issue. So I think this is one of the scenarios where this build might be better than using the normal Death Givers build, but it's one of the few in the open world, as you'll see. This clip is really interesting. It, it showed me a very big flaw to this build, and I think... It's, it's an important clip to show. Um, so these two guys attack me. They're both using axes, which not not great against death givers. But you see how here how he escapes, and I'm unable to finish him off. So he, now he's still a threat. He might have healing potions. He might be able to heal up. But I'm unable to close the distance, able to dash or anything to get to him. I only have my Hellion shoes which only work if you're within a certain range. So I do end up finishing him off here, but now I'm completely out of movement, and his friend is just bullying me right now and just unloading damage on me. Thankfully, his friend pops his reflect a little bit too early. If he would have used it 
later at all in this fight, he definitely would have won. But this this comes down very, very last second, and I end up killing him. Here, I think health potions would have been much better. And as you can see in this next clip, I actually have switched to health potions because the mana potions, they don't you don't really need them unless you're in like a team fight. Like if you're in a 5v5, I think the mana potions are better. But in by yourself solo, you want to be using health potions. So another weakness I want to highlight with this build in the open world is un you're unable to catch people that are trying to escape. You really need to just finish them off right away or they just pop their sprint and they're gone. But if you are against some noobs and some 4.1, you definitely can just explode them and it's kind of hilarious how quickly they die. The, the problem being, if they're in 4.1, you probably could have killed them in anything, but it, it is still kind of funny. This next and final clip is where the build shines. It is incredible in Arena. It is so good. I think I ended up going 10-0 and 0 in this uh, match, and I, I felt invincible. I felt like a god out there. Like I was killing people in a couple hits. I was dealing so much damage. I was able to escape very, very easily, and healing wasn't an issue because I had a dedicated healer. That's the issue with it being in the open world, and that's why you need healing potions in the open world because there are things that will be able to catch up to you. There are things that can hit people that are invisible, like axes. There, There's AoE damage that you're going to be taking no matter what, no matter how invisible you are, and you need something to heal you up. So Arena or like maybe even a 5v5 Hellgate, I should definitely try this in Hellgates, that's where this build is going to shine. That's where this build is better than the typical Deathgiver build, is in these arena matches and in group fights where you have a dedicated healer to keep your health topped up, and you can just go to town on the squishies on the other team. So enjoy the rest of this arena clappage footage, and if you made it this far in the video, I'm doing a secret giveaway that only people know about if they made it this far. First five people to find me in game and tell me pineapple bread. That's the secret code word. You have to find me in game, tell me the secret code word pineapple bread, and I will be giving out 100,000 silver to the first five people that find me in game and tell me pineapple bread. Thank you for watching this far into the video. I know Many people will have clicked off since it's not the giveaway part of the video, and I want to reward your guys' loyalty for watching the whole video. Thanks again. Stay soft. Remember, pineapple bread. Find me in-game. Just say, say it to me and then hit trade, and I will give you 100K, first five people to do it. Thanks, guys, and stay soft.